Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Future Balls. It's Nathan Waters and Tristan Grace and T Dogs in the house. Spinning <laughs> balls. Future topics will come out. We'll mash them together. Yeah, and we like one stuck in there. What's that one stuck in the in the grate there? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> They're all falling apart right now. These balls. It's just duct tape like, around little bingo like, balls. Fuck no, I am not in your topic this week. <laughs> well, we've got the three. Well, we've got the first two, and then we'll read the third one later. First one is collective intelligence. Ooh, I like that one. And the second one is dun, 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 virtual currencies. No, virtual conference virtual currencies no virtual <laughs> i have no fucking idea what this says fuck you ball we're going for a new one computation okay that's kind of cool collective intelligence and computation we are the computer we are the computer thanks for coming that's pretty good I think we made. <laughs> we made this exact joke last week. Did I? Oh fuck! It's getting old now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, God, I'm not sure where to go with this computation and collective intelligence. I think you need computation to actually do proper collective intelligence. I mean, sure, there's forms of collective intelligence on, like, say, a tribal level or before computers happened, but it was really kicked into overdrive once that started. And, like, we talk about real computation, like, you know, the creation of maths and stuff. That was where societies were really started to flourish was with maths. Huge grain of salt here, but it definitely helped. Yeah, fishing. <laughs> I, um, but... I'm, I'm, I've got a good starting point. Okay. Um uh, was uh, recapture. Okay. Recapture. So, um, uh, Louis Louis von Arn, I think his name is the guy who uh, he's now uh, the guy behind Duolingo. Mm. So he started recapture, and his whole big thesis back when he was at college, and the reason he made recapture was um, human computation. And he's got this like couple of really good like old maybe TED Talky type things about um, yeah, basically like treating mass groups of humans as like a giant computational um structure um, yeah it's not really collective intelligence it's like dumb stuff like you know it's humans doing small little tasks so the recapture thing if everyone anyone doesn't know it's all about um you would solve those captures to prove you're not a robot but while you're doing that you're actually you, it used to be this way you were actually like transcribing newspapers um because they know some of the words, but then as you're typing in the other words, they then use that, and you kind of once you get a ma- mass of people like putting in different answers, you basically converge towards um, you know really accurate transcription. So I don't know where to go from there, but that's like a s- interesting starting point of like purely you know computation and collective intelligence. Well, we can see whether like the where reach up captures gone from there. Like you know, it's now going into actually recognizing objects. Like you know, pick out the trains, pick out the cars, pick out the the dogs or whatever it is to train the computers to better see all of that. Um, and if we just keep on going, it's kind of like still those problems that computers can't properly solve, but humans can. Yeah, harness the collective and un- intelligence, the collective unconsciousness of the biological meat bags. Well, something I really like um. I hate to bring it back to work, but uh, like, uh, you know, like Amazon's Mechanical Turk. Mm. I think that's huge. I'd, it'd be interesting to work out the stats on that. I'm pretty sure they they must hire like millions and millions of people, but I've, I think it's one of those entities where they just they don't tell you what's going on because it is like the definition of, of worker exploitation. <laughs> it's worse than their, you know, it's worse than you know workers pissing in bottles in Amazon factories because it's just like people getting paid like fifty cents an hour type thing. But anyway. Um, I love this idea of uh, fractally, like taking taking uh, a big problem that people want to solve, and then just like fractally splitting it into smaller and smaller pieces, um, not and not getting it to the, not splitting it down to the level of like you know, which which what which picture is a cat? <laughs> 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 like you don't want to go that far down because that's just like dehumanizing. But taking a huge grand problem and it could be anything, and then just like um, just sending it through layers of fractal branching where you get down to a point where it's like, okay, you've got all these little micro tasks that are like maybe a couple of hours long. Like maybe it takes you a day to complete um, or maybe like a week to complete. Like something like it's still solid, something like, you know, that's a good, enjoyable challenge for you to solve and then have those tasks be routed and matched to the right person mm. who's available to do that. And then you just have all those tasks just like trickle up and, and rejoin back together. Um, and that's a really cool way of like taking 
you know, applying collective intelligence in a way that could be scaled really interestingly um, for big problems without dehumanizing, yeah, the, the human at the end of the game. I guess because what it's doing there, it's um, they're kind of like two aspects of uh, of the same thing, really, like kind of collective intelligence and computation. Let's say if you go back to your first thing of, oh, just identify a cat, like in the most exploitative things, that could be done with computation. Uh, but so the collective intelligence is more of that that artistic level on top. And so say with like your fractal thing blooming all the way to the top, it's like allowing computation to do all the most repetitive, boring tasks, but then allowing the collective intelligence to put the salt on top or to actually like, you know, craft the computation into something that's beneficial at this point. So that's kind of the, that's kind of, I guess the trick really is finding things that can be still benefit from increased computation that the collective intelligence can then just go on top of. Well, because even with this, it's um, it's not pure collective intelligence. It's still just one person doing something there. Like maybe you could have a whole group of people all working together on the one thing. I'm thinking of Wikipedia or thinking of like big forums or stuff there, how it's kind of meshing together into something grand. Yeah. Well, it still comes back to individuals doing something. It does, um, yeah. Or small teams of individuals. Mm. Yeah, even that, like, I mean, you all boil it down. It's all an individual doing something. Yeah. It's all humans until we work out how to surgically attach them to each other. <laughs> then We're you have getting two close. Humans, yeah? Like, if you, if you sew someone's arm to another person's arm, you've now got, like, double the computation. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Oh, I wonder if you could, like, measure computation levels by say something like a productivity software, say a, like Atlassian stuff, right? And so you've got all of these people together, like an actual organization that the structures you actually put on top there, you can measure the computational collective intelligence of an organization by how they actually work and bubble and create artifacts and all of that together. Maybe that's why Jira is so loved. You run the calculation and it says, you are less intelligent than like four people. <laughs> <laughs> Your 10,000 person organization is less, is less intelligent than four people. They're beating <laughs> you, man. Like, <laughs> you can do better. Please do better. Okay, I'm going to pull out another ball and let's see what it is. Because I still do not know what that other one was. Bad writing. Oh, well. Peer you to- wrote them. Yeah, I know. And it's terrible. I can read all the others because it's a giant word. Peer to peer. P2P. Oh, well, fun. yeah, it has to be peer-to-peer, I guess. Everything it's, we just said was peer-to-peer. Yeah, it doesn't have to be peer-to-peer, though. I Again, from the whole top-down approach, it could very easily not be that. I'd say that probably most of the collective intelligence aren't. Like, even the recapture stuff, that's not all um, open, is it? It's all just by one entity saying, was was it Google that did recapture? Yeah, Google bought them, yeah. Yeah, so they're the ones doing it themselves. It wasn't open to everyone. That's actually a big True. issue. You think of like all the AI yeah, I stuff. mean, like MTurk. MTurk is like <laughs> Amazon effectively hiring millions and millions of people to yeah identify cat pictures. Well, so how, how would you do a peer-to-peer mechanical Turk? How could that look? How could that work? Well, it's kind of what I want to build with peerism or, or peer AI at some point, where it's, it's that whole like referral task matching, routing, fractal splitting of tasks. Mm. Um I don't know how it's going to pan out, but like the ultimate goal is like, I want to get to a point where anyone anywhere in the world who has a problem, like some task they need, they have a problem in front of them. It could be they need help with something or they need to solve something. They should be able to like just announce that and not on a platform, but like to the world. And it just routes through a whole bunch of like federated networks that are all interconnected to each other, but not owned by any one monolith and not running on, you know, one platform. Um, so it's, it's actually distributed. And then we just like, instantly find the right people who are available to help you um, either immediately or it would instantly match you to a a commons owned piece of automation that's been built that could possibly solve that thing for you right now or it matches you to some recording that someone's already done showing how to solve that problem so it becomes like a super like a way to like overclock things because if you can reduce if you think of like um yeah, transistors. This, this the closer we bring transistors together, the faster the computation runs. If we can like bring people with problems and people with solutions, or computation with solutions closer together and and more rapidly, then you just rapidly speed up everything. Like imagine if, if okay. you could wake up and every every time you have a problem, it's just solved immediately for you. Well, I I guess that's kind of the the 
what the platform could be, right? Is if you're immediately sharing what your problems are, like in a manner that other people can then access and look at, because what you'd need to start with, yeah. it feels like, is um, just having all the problems there. And then people could look at it, the tons of problems that are there and then say, oh, how can I automate this? Or how can I make this work? And it's kind of like the, the two-sided things, right? That you want to get as much problems in there. And then once it's found, you kind of solve that shit. Yeah. Well, I think that will actually happen too. Like if you have a... An if you have all the tasks requests be open source, then you would you would very quickly identify like the lowest hanging fruit to automate. Yeah. Um, because you'd see oh, a bunch of people are requesting this same task over and over and over again. And you, you then create a, a commons a commons marketplace where it's like there's a profit motive, but the profit motive would taper off over time. Mm. So, because the end goal would be like, you know, this is one of the reasons why everyone hates the idea of automation because of private ownership. But the end goal of this system would be like, hey, we've got a, a marketplace for you to make some money um, by automating tasks for people if you think you can have a crack at it. If it works, you'll get, you know, quite rich qu pretty quickly, but then it tapers off and eventually it becomes owned by no one, mm. owned by everyone and owned by no one. And then just like, it could even just be a free automation that just, it's just part of the collective. Yeah, hells yeah. Well, that, that's it. Like if everyone's immediately sharing easily without having to think what they need help with or what the next thing could be. I mean, like you could also have an AI automatically doing that for you, but like in an yeah. easy way, that's it's all there. That is connecting with everyone else. Like what you're saying, it's bringing the human neurons closer together. It's the uh, speeding up yeah, yeah. the problem solving yeah. ability. Yeah, I wonder what it could be to start with, or maybe it's maybe it's better to go the other way and thinking like what the absolute end game of it would look like. That would be anything that you could think of could be immediately solved. I think you mentioned that before. So any yeah. physical thing. So it would only be creating something new, but then I guess that would give you the information or that you would might need to help you get to that next level. So it would be only novel pro problems possibly it could only be solved through that collective intelligence. We could even, um, if you maybe like if you agree that the that creativity is merely the product of combining two things together, then you could actually you could actually automate creativity through this system. Mm -hmm. So you could have a you could do something where you say um, rather than just like sending one task to one person and saying hey like solve this for me, you could send them two bits of information and say hey combine these together in a in a different way or just combine them together. And then if you do that with enough people you'll get back enough like creative solutions it's true. to something that would be be different. No, oh, it's kind of what we're doing like, right now, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like a reverse it's like a, a reverse fractal, maybe. It's like hmm. one 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 flow goes down the fractal tree and then branches out and another flow can then bring it back. That'd be pretty cool with uh getting highly, highly specialized people and really well, yeah, getting high and uh, <laughs> highly high <Least> specialized. <laughs> but like with specific, um, specific topics and saying like, hey, what, how could this happen? Like how, make these ideas have sex. Like, you know, come up with something cool and novel and new. Like you know, you're bringing together different people of different, maybe even like adjacent uh, spheres of influence. And you can say, hey, like combine together and start thinking of this. Like say, so, uh, yeah, that'd be really, really interesting. I wonder if that uh, happens anywhere. That'd be good to facilitate that. I feel like that's where you'd get some cool new ideas. That's what we should do. We should just uh, invite some interesting people on and say, cool, come on with new shit. <laughs> Make some sex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lucky it's not. And every time you have a new idea, you've got to make a sex sound like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just do that normally. <laughs> that's my default behavior. <laughs> I tried to make oh, I, it didn't work. I tried. There's that sound. I can't. I can't do it. There's, it's on TikTok a lot. You know what it is. There. I don't have a oh. high enough pitched voice. <laughs> no, I don't. Know. I think you've like, got a different algorithm to me. It comes out like yeah, it does come out good. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, I'm gonna add in that ball that I couldn't work out before. <laughs> Just make it up. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say it's uh, virtual conferences. Yeah. Peer-to-peer. -peer. This is uh, getting people together. How will people actually congregate with all of this stuff together? In the far future, will it still just be like, you know, you're getting your problem solved through text? Or is it going to be through video? Or is it just going to be through thought? What could the collective do at that point? How could you get the best people sharing their ideas? 
Do you think you'll have well, a... In, uh, in Zuckerberg's metaverse, we'll all be sitting around a corporate boardroom table and that's where all the innovation will happen. <laughs> in VR. In VR, yeah. <laughs> so you can go anywhere, but you go to a boardroom. Hmm. I like the idea of the, the virtual conferences. I haven't actually been to too many, but they must be happening in VR or happening in other places. Or Yeah. I mean, how does even Clubhouse or all those uh, drop-in audio things work with that if you could get people conferencing there? I feel like it wouldn't work too well. Yeah. They seem to work well, but I'm guessing like all social just devolves. <laughs> yeah. As soon as someone calls someone else a racist, like... That must be a new. What's that that phrase where it's like, oh, as soon as it, as soon as Hitler's mentioned, there's some like Godwin's law. Yeah, something like that. There must be something like that for calling someone a racist these days. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think because... VR VR conferences would be, or virtual conferences, whatever. Would it's kind of like everything we've just been talking about, but like, how would you do that at a smaller scale? Mm. So just like fifty people, hundred people. How do you, how would you? Yeah. Bootstrap collective intelligence. Um, that, oh, that that's another cool phrase that like um, when I when I was going deep in the whole whole chain rabbit hole thing, um, this idea of building building little open source modules, what they call them zones, where you could plug it into any community and you could just bootstrap collective intelligence. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means, but I love that phrase. <laughs> Bootstrapping collective intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Fuck so yeah. Imagine you can just so uh, one of the great uh, a practical example is one of the one of the guys that I met in that space who was wanting to build a whole team based um collaborative things is he's in uh, bendigo which is like a smallish australian town Tiny and town. he wanted to he wanted to um kind of have like a sharing economy built into that and so i kept thinking about like from his perspective like well fr- from what i want to build and then how could i just like drop in give him some little piece of code some little module that he can drop in to his bendigo sharing economy thing he's trying to build and then just like over time have that thing bootstrap collective intelligence inside Bendigo so that everyone just becomes much more interconnected, much more intelligent. They're able to solve each other's problems faster and they're able to operate inside like a little mini parallel economy as much as, as much as they can. So it becomes this little like, whoop, and then it just explodes out from there. Like, yeah, hell's yeah. That's cool. And then how do you do it at the conferences? Same thing. Like you got a hundred people. How can you drop something in and they can just like gather around it and, do crazy stigmergic patterns and stuff like that. And it just kind of like emerges this collective intelligence that nobody expected at the end of the, the conference. It, it makes me think of, um, it's as the term, it's like a cultural technology. So it's kind of, if yeah. people agree on a, a certain way of interacting, uh, like, you know, with certain things they can do or just, you know, certain ways, that's how you actually get this, these forms of collective intelligence appearing, right? So if you could actually put uh, like a, a way of agreeing at a conference, like this is how everyone's going to interact and like you can augment that with uh, different computers and computation and all of that, that could actually be the way to emerge the best type of collective intelligence, these set of rules or agreements. And you're right at a different scales, it could be different things because you wouldn't want the exact same rules happening on a global scale that would be happening at Bendigo. I feel like you'd lose a lot there. The sharing community between, you know, Bendigo and, I don't know, London very different but a conference, yeah, yeah. maybe that's a way of uh, scaling up so say like we were talking about before grabbing a uh, two experts at the edges of their field the way that they'd interact together would say that type of cultural technology like collective intelligence technology the module used there would be very different to a uh, conference level with you know 50 people who are all super experts and that's different again to the module used in bendigo to the module used for a whole metropolis Maybe that's a cool way of looking at it. Like you were saying with the hollow chain modules that you build them at, at different scales. Yeah, well, like each each of those communities would have their own private distributed network, essentially. Mm. So they, and then they'd just be bridged to get, so yeah, like you'd have the, the Bendigo P2P distributed private network and then it would have its own modules, you know, that are doing its own thing for its own kind of cultural yeah. norms and ways of doing things inside their little... The, inside their little membrane, inside their little organism. And then you have bridges to other ones. So if you want to, if Bendigo does want to connect to the London uh, network for some reason, then you have bridges. Mm. And really the bridges are just people. So, uh, and that's the best thing. Like you think of, you know, the best bridge between say Bendigo and London is someone who's like an expat from London who lives in Bendigo. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so maybe that's... Humans become the bridges. Yeah. It's, it's bubbling up and bubbling down, like a fractaling down until you get to the two people that are actually needed to speak at that level. And then you work yeah. out the cultural tech there to actually get them to properly interact and share their ideas. I like that. Yeah. That's it's, it's the same thing. Cool. Even like, you think up, like friend down. groups. That's probably... A, a friend groups is probably another one. Like people can understand like there's... Every friend group has like core cool little circles, but then like there's always overlap. Mm. And the overlap is where it kind of bridges. Totally. You're seeing that with like, well, yeah, you see it in Facebook all the time, all these different groups. And like when you're going to a different party and you see different uh, friend groups of yourself, like all merging together, you're like, this is fucking weird. But you've got your connections that start strengthening bonds between people through that connection. Yeah. But maybe that's uh, where I'm... Um, parties. Yeah, I remember parties. I remember parties. <laughs> you remember pubs? Pubs were cool. <laughs> So we're, we're, in, uh, we're in like well, fucking like week 14 lockdown here at the moment in Sydney. It's brutal. <laughs> Something like that, 14? Yeah, can't move more than 5Ks. Anyway, but um, so yeah, no, I, I like this idea though of um, focusing on the actual social technology as it scales up and scales down, like at, at different sizes. Because again, we're, we're still interacting on very, I don't know, we don't have that like that different break point that sure you have like say Messenger or Discord with it kind of is starting to appear there with different levels of groups. So you go up to say like Reddit with the, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. They're kind of like acting like city states at that point. So maybe it's a actually yeah. um, clarifying it and saying like building the whole stack almost trying from the very beginning to say, this is how two billion people interact all the way up. That could be a very interesting way to do it. This is kind of just thinking <laughs> product ideas now rather than the far future shit. But I like, uh, well, that'll be it in the far future, right? You'd hope that it's just all automatically together. A wizard does it. <laughs> it's all together. It's all together. We're all together. It's all together. All the machinery and all the humans and all of that. You don't worry about the individual talking to another individual. That's still trillions upon trillions of cells talking to another trillions upon trillions. The memes merge to one super meme. Yeah. I mean, it would suck if every cell in your body had an ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they poor, just wouldn't shut up mm, poor fingernails you have to be sacrificed yeah. for the greater good they all have an opinion <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what happens when we're a trillion person society and it's well more than that they're all interacting you're like oh these people have to be you know gotten rid of because they're growing too much and all you're doing there is just to protect the end of your appendages you're a nail <laughs> <laughs> that's all you do uh, What's my purpose? I'm a nail. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you grow too long and then I have to cut you off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then cancer gets formed. <laughs> Damn it, no. What do nails even... When do you even use nails? Seriously, like... Like, okay, maybe picking at things. But, like, how often do you pick at things? <laughs> like, I don't understand yeah. their point. You just used to be our claws. Pre- <laughs> are they for, like, flicking things? You know, just protect the fleshy bits. It's weird. Maybe is it to like stop your nubs from like being damaged? I think like a so. Nub helmet. <laughs> it's a nub helmet. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this episode has gone in weird places. Definitely the weirdest one we've done. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, should we leave it there? That's it. Yeah. Right. Bye. We're done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>